Greetings and salutations, everybody. Hot off the presses, it's the brand new edition of the Weekly Hero. I'm, of course, your host, John Cambia. Awesome to have you guys joining me here, as I, of course, am joined by the co-editor of the paper here, Mr. Robert Meyer Burnett. Robert, how are you doing today? You know, it's it's nice to be fulfilling these four-color fantasies with you here on our Weekly Hero show, John. And man, what a day that will go down in history for the comic book movie genre, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in history, we have a comic book movie nominated for Best Picture. It's happened. Black Panther, of course, was nominated for Best Picture. Now, there, there's, I, I want to make a point here, though. There has been a little bit of a cloud over this, of which part I'm part of the conversation here, too, because some discussion... You know, is it really worth deserving? Is Black Panther really deserving of an Academy Award nomination? I mentioned it's the only film in the last four years to get a nomination for Best Picture that didn't also have at least one other major nomination in either directing, screenwriting, acting, cinematography, none. Only the second film in the last two years, or 10 years, only the third film in the last 25 years to do that. There were other better comic book movies, blah, 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 blah. For instance, I put up a poll the other day asking you guys, what was the best comic book movie of the year? 54% of you said Avengers Infinity War, 32% of you said Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, and just 7 out of 10 of you said Black Panther, and 7 out of 10 of you said Aquaman. That means 7 out of every 100 only thought Black Panther was that. We've gone over that. We've talked about that ab nauseum that's gone on in discussions. Was it the right one to pick? Blah, 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 blah. But let's push that cloud aside for a second. Yes, did the right comic book movie. Okay, it's a discussion that we can have another time. Sure. But right now... I think we just got to celebrate the fact that we have a comic book movie. The seal's been broken. We've got a comic book movie. Has been like last year, big advance. Logan, first comic book movie ever nominated for one of the major categories, best screenplay. Yep. Yay! Although it should have gotten nominated for best picture because it was the best movie of the year. Anyway, we'll put that aside for a second. This year we got it. And we can discuss and debate whether the right comic book movie got it. The fact is a comic book movie did it. And we got Black Panther, an MCU movie, one of the major comic book movie brands out there now. Best Picture, Rob, as somebody who has followed the medium and the evolution of the medium and seeing from the day that we, you'll believe a man could fly when Christopher Reeve flew through the skies to today, what does this mean for you as a fan to see a comic book movie nominated for Best Picture? Well, first of all, it's, it's astonishing to see where we've come. And... You know, I've watched the comic book medium as a comic book reader myself for the better part of my life. I've always seen, comic books have always, people have always said, especially in America, not so much in Europe or, or Asia, but in America, people are like, comic books. You know, comic book was, was, was used as a term of derision, you know, for yeah. literature. If you're reading, or something that was comic book-esque means that it doesn't mean as much as, say, a novel uh, right, it wasn't sure, wasn't yeah. worthy as literature, and I I, I remember I, I went to high school and I had a teacher that was being very dismissive of comic books, and I took episode episodes issues of Moon Knight that Bill Sienkiewicz and Doug Mensch their their first run on Moon Knight, and I said read these issues, and she actually came back and said wow, these are more sophisticated than I thought, and I think you know for Black Panther while it perhaps it's look it's best picture, but in the context of a comic book movie, I talked about this earlier. We're dealing with issues, you know, of colonialism, the central conflict between Killmonger and T'Challa. It resonates beyond just two comic book, a villain right. and a hero going at each other. And I think the underlying themes that are contained in Black Panther are absolutely worthy of, if it wasn't a comic book movie and it was dealing with those same themes and say, in a different way, it would absolutely be best picture. We just think it's funny because it's comic book related. But if you're looking at what that movie's really about, I mean, it's dealing with cultural appropriation and oppression and colonialism. And these are heady issues mm -hmm. that are in the context of a comic book film. So I think, think that it's richly deserved and it's about goddamn time, John. Yeah. I mean, and look, I am one of these guys that did not think that Black Panther was the film to do it. I think it's a great film. I enjoyed it immensely. But man, what does it say about not just the evolution of the Academy. What does it say about the evolution of the genre that here we are 
We're in 2019 right now, and we are able to legitimately debate which of the three comic book movies should have got Best Picture nomination. Can you wrap your heads around that, guys? Because we have three films that could have been nominated for Best Picture from the comic book genre. Black Panther, which did get the nomination, Avengers Infinity War, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, which I thought was the third overall best film of the year, personally. What an age we live in, not just because we are seeing hand in hand too. We're seeing these things are connected. As the comic book movie genre has matured and evolved, and developed over the years, we are seeing the Academy's recognition of it mature, maybe a little slower than we would like, Sure, but it's clearly coming. Logan, best support, uh, best screenplay nomination. This year, Black Panther with the best picture nomination. I mean, we've seen comic book movies get the technical award uh, recognition for a while, that's great, but now it's coming into play with the big boys. And I think it's just great that it's not just, because everybody's paying attention to the Academy has recognized it. It's not just that. It's that this genre has grown and developed and, and has kind of gone to the next level now where we had not one but three movies that we can have legitimate discussions about but which one should have gotten that best picture nom? It's crazy. Yeah, it's, you know, it's crazy. And to me, as a fan of genre cinema, whether it's science fiction, fantasy, horror, comic book related films, I've lived a life where I've seen my favorite genres marginalized by the Academy. You know, there have been horror films like The Exorcist and A Clockwork Orange, a science fiction future shock movie, Silence of the Lambs, one. You know, that was a horror film, one. Yeah. We saw Return of the King in 2003. Uh, at the 2004 Academy and all Awards, all the Lord of the Rings films get the nominated. Lord of the Rings get films gets no, get nominated. So it's great to see what is traditionally has been a marginalized genre, the comic book film, as far as the Academy is concerned, get this kind of recognition. Yeah, I mean, it means a lot. It also means that you know our culture is shifting. It's more accepting that a comic book derived film can actually have something to say and something that's meaningful. When before it was like. You know, looking at like Halle Berry's Catwoman or Shaquille O'Neal and Steel, which were also comic book derived movies. I don't think anybody would have said it was time for those movies to get nominated by the Academy. Right. Because it's not just a matter that we're seeing the Academy. It's getting the, the, the recognition it never got. We're seeing this genre deserve that recognition yes. now today that it never really got before. And that's the part that really floors me. Because I'm telling you, there's so many years. Like, I don't think Black Panther was the best comic book movie of the year. But there are many, many years that it would have been the best comic book movie of the year. And I think it's just a testament to where we've come. And you know what's funny? There used to be a day, we talk about this all the time, because this has happened years ago, but there was a day when no real stars would want to be in a comic book movie. Right. And we know that a couple years ago, that started to change, right? Now, when you get Robert Redford and Sir Ben Kingsley, and Anthony Hopkins, and you're getting these guys in there, but now, I can't help but wonder if we're getting to the point that you still have that other level of echelon of actor that would go like, I want Oscar caliber roles. I want roles that could get me Oscar buzz. Well, guess what? Logan Best Screenplay, Black Panther Best Picture nomination. Who knows, maybe next year we're talking about a Shazam Best Picture nomination. We're talking about an Endgame Best Picture. Who knows? Maybe it gets to the point now where guys like a DiCaprio or a Pitt or guys like this, a Denzel, may look at these movies and go, you know what? I can have my cake and eat it too. I can go and be in something big and successful for a different generation of my tradition of years, and I can pursue Oscar glory and Absolutely. immortality all at the same time, and we never could do that before. You know, this is also a huge, a huge vote of confidence, or not confidence, but kudos to the MCU, to Kevin Feige and to the entire creative team. You know, I've often maintained that Kevin Feige deserves to get the Irving Thalberg Award. Some people say that- Someday he'll get it. Yeah, I, I, but I would it. give it to him. I would say that what, what Marvel has done, you know, this is just the icing on the cake that shows what they have managed to do unprecedented success in Hollywood in only a decade, hit after hit after hit. What what Hollywood producer has had the kind of track record that Kevin Feige has had over only a decade of time? Sure. They, they, now, for that award, they want to put more distance between it and when of, they give it. Of so course. It'll come. But it'll I, come. I, But I think that now is a perfect time. I mean, I don't think Black Panther's going to win Best Picture. 
No chance. I don't think it will. No chance. But, I, I mean, wouldn't it be great to give somebody like Kevin Feige an award now when Black Panther has – Black Panther has shattered so many glass ceilings and has the, the kind of representation it's shown not just for, for all kinds of people all over the world but also our genre. I mean, it re, if you love the comic book genre, this is as groundbreaking as it gets for a comic book movie, and, and on, it's fantastic. On top of all the other accolades, uh, Black – not that this is important, but it's interesting – Black Panther is now the biggest box office hit ever to be nominated for. There's never been a, a movie that's made wow. more money than Black Panther that's been nominated for Best Picture. So it's that. And, and I want to say you you very correctly point out about that this is also a nod of validation to Kevin Feige and the work that the MCU has done. I think it goes even beyond that. I, I mean, what you said is completely true. I don't care if you're a Marvel fan. I don't care if you're a DC fan. This is a win for comic book movie fans. Absolutely. Did Marvel fans want an MCU movie to be the first to cross that line? Yes. Did DC fans want a DC movie to be first to cross that line? Sure. Absolutely. But had Aquaman gotten a, a nomination for Best Picture instead of Black Panther? Yeah, big win for the DC fans, but I still would say this is overall, in the big picture, this is a win for fans of the genre. And not only that, the first female African American production designer ever, yeah. ever in history, There's got nominated first with this. Got nominated for uh, an production Academy design. Award for production design. That's incredible too, you know. And and again, it it there's so many milestones that this movie represents. And I think this Best Picture award really is just a testament to all the work that everybody, starting with Ryan Coogler on down, his whole creative team, everybody at Marvel. It, it's really it's it's a great a great moment for everybody involved. Now. I should say, you know, you mentioned, I mean, you don't think it's going to win. I said it guarantees it's not going to win. Never has, only four times in, in history. I know. Has a, in the 5,000 year history of the Academy, has a movie won Best Picture without its director. But never in history, ever, has a movie won Best Picture that was not, wasn't nominated for any Best Director it wasn't nominated for Best Screenplay. It wasn't nominated for any of the acting categories. It wasn't nominated for cinematography. That's never happened. So uh, clearly, it's not going to win Best Picture, and that's fine. That's the next milestone that comic book movies have to cross. But we're here now, and it's just it's so weird to wrap your your mind around that. A, a comic book movie has been nominated for Best Picture. And again, I think we can have the debate and the discussion over the coming weeks and months about whether it was the right comic book movie to get that nomination. Sure. That, did Logan deserve to get it? Yes. We can make the argument though, going all the way back that maybe The Dark Knight should have gotten a nomination, although The Dark Knight came out in a year when there was only five nominees. So that's a little bit different. Put all that aside today. A comic book movie, a great comic book movie, is getting recognized by the Academy as one of the best of the year. And that yeah. is a day that I think a lot of fans never thought we would see. I think a lot of commentators and pundits we knew it would come someday, but the day we're all pulling out our false teeth and grabbing our canes before we go, but, but here it is. And that, I think this blows the doors open now for where we can go from here. You know where I would like to see? I, I want Disneyland to open Wakanda. A Wakanda world? I want just Wakanda. The land of Wakanda. They've got the Guardians of the Galaxy ride. Open Wakanda. I want to see my my sci-fi Afrofuturism. I want to be able to go to Wakanda. I want to, I, a kids could do, join the Dora Milaje, <laughs> you know, and you you get to go meet Shiri and all that. Come on. Disneyland make Wakanda. Because right now they got that Jedi training thing where you can bring your kid and they'll have uh, Jedis come out and teach your kid. How to use. What if they had that Dora Milaje training center? It would be awesome. Go up and have somebody dressed like Danny and yeah, and you could put you could buy that costume for uh, kid. Come on, man, Wakanda, just Wakanda, not Wakanda Land, just Wakanda. So you know what, guys? For look again, I'm I'm one of the former's voices. I like look. I didn't think Black Panther deserved the not. I thought it should have been. Okay, fine, that's great, but. Let's put all that aside between now and the end of February. Right. And just revel in this. And it's not like Black Panther was some piece of crap movie. It is a great movie. Right. So let's just all rally around this. DC fan, Marvel fan alike. Let's just rally around this and celebrate this. And you know what? Look, just, let's just adjust your expectation. It's not going to win. But that's fine. We've taken the first step. That is, that's right. And, and now... 
Marvel, DC, Sony, whatever, they can look at this genre and embrace this genre and know that our fans are behind us. We've improved making these movies and even bodies like the Academy are now recognizing that growth in our stuff. And there's no limits anymore. There's none. It's like the, the Rankin and Bass Christmas special. Santa Claus is coming to town <laughs> yeah. with that great song. Put one foot in front of the other. And soon you'll be walking out the door. Oh. Well, that's where we are with the comic book genre. Good philosophy, my movie. friend. Good philosophy. All right. <laughs> sure, I'm sure we have lots more to talk about with Black Panther and its nomination in the days and weeks to come. But let's move on to this other next little item here. Mm. We talked on this show about the fact that, well, it looks like X-Force is dead. Because Rob Liefeld got on social media, said, yeah. poor went out for X-Force, it's done, and blah, blah, blah. Buried within that report, and we discussed this briefly on the John Campion show, buried in that report was a throwaway line, Gambit was also scrapped. Okay, Gambit scrapped. No big surprise. Disappointed to me, because I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what Channing Tatum would do. Not a, you didn't used to be a Channing Tatum Channing Tatum. Didn't used to be a Channing Tatum fan. He's improved, and my appreciation for him has grown over the years. But fine, it's done. Then, this little story comes out, I believe it was in Deadline, talking about that Channing Tatum still wants to do this movie and is even looking at directing it himself. Now, we already know there's a ticking clock here. Any movie that Mike and made needs to go into production within the next two months. So... There's a couple of things for us to look at here, Rob. Number one, what do we even think about Gambit getting made in the first place? Number two, what do we think about a Channing Tatum directing a Gambit movie? And then number three, have they actually been doing work on this thing where it is conceivable that they could actually go into production within the next two months? Or are two months going to come and go and we'll just realize that line, that, that report really... And maybe there was some merit to it, but it couldn't turn it. Where are we at with this thing, do you think? I, you know... Look, this Gambit movie has been in pre-production or was one in one state or another for a very long time. Years and the, years There's and probably years. been a lot of work that's been done. There's probably a lot of, whether it's pre-production work, if they have the need, and I can see this happening. I mean, if there's enough, if it's been pre there's probably not a lot of huge visual effects in a Gambit movie. I can't imagine. It's probably far more character-based like Logan was. Yeah. There was still visual effects, but definitely much more grounded and down-to-earth than, say, Apocalypse. Right. If the movie's like that, maybe. Right. Like, if you could put it into pre-production and get it out there quickly, it might be one last hurrah, one, one little nugget that the Fox executives over... I mean, they probably have money that they're going to spend or that they want to spend. I could see it possibly happening. And and remember, Channing Tatum has his, his boy Steven Soderbergh, who's one of the mm -hmm. kings, came out of indie directing. He's a man who shoots his own movies, edits his own movies. And if there's one guy that could get that movie up and running, it's, it's Soderbergh. If, if Channing Tatum needs a mentor to go to. Maybe they'll shoot the whole thing on an iPhone. I mean, they could do that. <laughs> Soderbergh's his new That's film. He's done. His new film, the basketball film, he's coming out like something, the something the bird. Yeah, something like that. I don't remember. But that was also shot on an iPhone. I don't think they're going to shoot Gambit on an iPhone. <laughs> but it could happen. I'd like, you know, me, I'm always, well, I want to believe. You know I'm what? like Fox Shoot the Mulder. whole thing. The way DC shot that opening of Justice League, where the little kids are talking to Superman. Oh God! <laughs> shoot me, Superman! Do, do, what, do you, what do you like about living on Earth? They shoot the whole Gambit film like that. Shoot it at found footage style. An entire Gambit movie shot found footage style on an iPhone Seven. And don't forget to somehow alter his mouth with CGI, so none of it looks quite real. Yeah. Instead, we do the reverse. So have him clean shaven, but CGI in a big, oh. gruffy, four day scruff you know, uh, Gambit stuff, but make it all CGI and have it move around. That would be great. Now I'm down. Now I'm totally down oh, for that. Oh, no. All right. Listen, we got a couple other things we want to talk about here, but you know, it wouldn't be an installment and a new issue of The Weekly Hero were it not for the fact that we need to take a little bit of time and appreciate a wonderful collectible that one of the great collectible aficionados in the world, Mr. Robert Meyer <laughs> brings in and talks to you. You know, Rob, the other day on, on uh, the John Cam show, one of the writers or one of the viewers wrote in and reminded us that Tim Burton's Batman is turning 30 years old yes, sir. this week. And in that vein, you No, not us this week. Oh, sorry, this, this year. year this year. year. And in that vein, you brought us something special. I did. Well, June, June of this year, June of 2019 marks 
the 30th anniversary, as you just said, of Tim Burton's Batman and Jack Nicholson's iconic performance. Look at that. As uh, as the Joker. Now, this is one of the very first hot toys. They're, they're sort of, uh, they haven't done this in a while, but these elite figures, they had these figures called the DX line. And they did a DX, Michael Keaton as Batman from this film, and they did... Jack Nicholson's The Joker. Now, this is one of my very favorite Hot Toys figures ever. If the, the facial sculpt, look at that facial sculpt, the clothing, the tailoring. He comes with great accessories. I just, I love this figure. The base lights up. I mean, this is one of the, I think one of the great action figures of all time. I really do. And I figured I'd had to bring it in to kick off this, the 30th anniversary year it's also the 40th anniversary year of Star Trek, the motion picture, but that's not really, well, Kirk's my hero. Maybe we can talk about <laughs> it later, but I thought this is one of the great, most iconic action figures I own. What I, uh, what I just can't get over it to me, there's, first of all, there's a lot of great stuff there. Of course, the iconic long gun, the clothing on him is fantastic. It's a great base. It also lights up, yep. but it's, it's as with many hot toys, it's the face. Yep. The oh. face is so, I feel like I'm looking into the eyes of Jack. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. I mean, just absolutely unbelievable. And uh, you've got some other collectibles from this Batman movie that uh, maybe over the coming months you'll also bring in. I think so. Everybody. One that won't fit on this table, I don't think. Oh. Maybe it will. Okay, well, I'm sure we'll, fit. we'll figure out a way to make it fit on the table <laughs> if it's that good. Okay, let's move on now to the next topic here. You know, one of the it, it's become commonplace now. A comic book movie is in development. And then all these whispers start, unfounded whispers about, this thing's getting standing ovations, BS. This thing's a hot mess, BS. You know, all these things here, did you hear that early test screenings did, you know what? People aren't allowed to talk about what happens at early test screenings. So right. all these early test screenings, BS, never pay attention. You know, so there have been some nays, I've heard some people say, this Dark Phoenix is going to crush it. We've also heard whispers saying, oh, this Dark Phoenix is supposed to be awful, right? You know me, I brush all that noise aside. Me too. That being said. And you know I've got a lot of hope for this X-Men movie. Even though I did not like X-Men Apocalypse. Did I did not like that film. I love the cast, and oh, this yes. is one of the greatest, most iconic X-Men storylines ever. Yeah, well... They didn't really do anything with the story. They didn't They didn't do Age of Apocalypse at all, which is what I was really hoping for. But I still contend, contend I have high hopes. The trailer came out. People complained about it, but I didn't mind it. I kind of liked the trailer. I kind of liked it too. So that's what makes this so hard to say. I talked to somebody earlier this week. Now, I got no details, nor did I ask for them. I said, don't tell me anything about it. Just... Good or not, and this person I talked to, who I know has seen the film, just said two words to me. It's terrible. And at that, my heart sank. Now, let me be clear here. I have not seen the film. I'm not saying it's terrible. I right. might watch it and think it's the greatest thing I've ever seen. I also had people I know tell me Bohemian Rhapsody isn't that good. Then I went to watch Bohemian Rhapsody and I freaking loved it. So take that with a giant grain of salt. But I just actually talked to someone who actually saw the film and just said to me, it's terrible. Have you been hearing anything about Dark Phoenix? It's funny you say that. Uh-oh. Uh, let's just say quite recently, Maybe as recently as, as today, I, I heard from an extremely, I'm only going to say an extremely reliable source who has, I've been talking to for years, I've been talking to this person and they're never wrong. And uh, they, they told me things, I heard a lot more details than you did. Now, apparently, there yeah, must I just heard two words. I just heard it's terrible. Oh, there must have I been. Don't a, share too many details. No, no, I'm not going to share any details, but a lot of details. And I, I think that my takeaway from it is that, yes, I've heard, let's just say that it isn't as good as anybody hoped it might be. Mm. But I think what, what distressed me the most was it doesn't sound much different than what they did with X-Men 3. And you would mm. think, 
because X Men Three is basically a substandard retelling of the Dark, Dark Phoenix, Phoenix storyline. Yeah. This version, from what I've been told, like I thought it would go into space, and you know, with we're we're, we're seeing Guardians of the Galaxy now, and we've we've uh, wouldn't they do? You can do anything now in these comic book movies, and apparently they've once again tried to tell a very down to earth version of this story akin to what they tried to do with the Dark Phoenix story in X-Men 3, which baffles me. Because after the, whether you liked Apocalypse or not, it had this huge apocalyptic yeah. ending. At the, I mean, a lot of stuff was going on. This movie, the scope of it seems, from what I've heard, quite small. And why would you go that direction? Especially what, look, this movie's coming out on the heels of a movie like Infinity War. I mean, that's the third Avengers film. This is going to be the fourth X-Men movie with this new group. You had First Class, Days of Future Past, Apocalypse. This should have been the end all. It's the send off for a lot of these characters, literally, Probably in some cases. Um, and and I just, I'm, I'm baffled by why they decided to go in the direction the film seemingly has gone. Well, yeah, I mean, look, on one hand, I love hearing comic book movies make it a little more grounded, more real. Like that. You can't do that with the Dark Phoenix story. No. That's that's not a story you can just keep grounded and keep it small town, and you can't go the Logan route with with subject matter like that. And again, I haven't seen the film. So Neither have I. I don't know. Maybe they do, do it grander. I will say this, though. I remember I was apprehensive. I'm not going to say I hated it. I'm not going to say I was totally against it. But when I heard that Simon Kimberg who is a hero to a lot of us in these circles because he's great. Indeed. He's great. He really is. But he has never directed anything. And I always kind of prefer it when guys are taking their first crack at directing something, do something a little smaller, a little more, you know, uh, less risky, something that can let you cut your teeth a little bit and then move on and do something. Thing. Much like the way they seem to be handling Dave Filoni over at Lucasfilm, a bunch, bunch of people saying, get Dave Filoni to direct the next Star Wars movie. Dave Filoni's never directed a live action anything. Ah, and I've always said, get him to cut his teeth. Ah, so what are they doing? Mandalorian, they're giving him a couple episodes to cut his teeth on some live action directing. They're prepping him to direct a Star Wars movie. I'm telling you that right now. Right, and, and look, Which is the right way to go. That's the way it should be, and I feel the same way. I mean, this is a film, and I was saying this yesterday on my own uh, uh, podcast, but it's like, I don't get why, I, look, Kinberg's done a lot for the studios. He's, you know, he's done a lot of that for the fandom, too. And a lot period. for, fandom. He's, for he's, fandom. he's great. But a movie like this, this, this literally the culmination of what might be the very last X-Men movie we see for a long time before it goes to the MCU, you would think that they'd want to give this film a grand send-off. The cast is certainly fantastic. I mean, McAvoy, Fassbender, I mean, all these guys... They got Jennifer Lawrence in there. They've got uh, you know uh, Sophie Turner coming. Uh, she's got her last Game of Thrones season coming too. I would want this to be this grand epic send off with the Shi'ar Empire and you know what what I grew up with, and to hear that it's not that is disappointing. But again, I don't believe anything. Just like you said, till I've seen it, it's just disappointing to know that I have to temper my expectations. Yeah, and I guess I'm always fine. I don't mind hearing that a movie isn't going to be about what I wanted it to be about because it can be completely different from what I was expecting or hoping for and still be great. The part that shook my soul was just having this dude I know say, it's terrible. That's the part that, like, so I don't care what it's about per se, but then the question is going to become this. We hear a lot of people asking, if it's terrible, and I get this question a lot, if it's terrible, what do you think that Disney just doesn't release it? Well, here's the thing. The money's already spent. Like, the movie's been made. The money's been spent. I cannot, while it is possible, I cannot see a scenario in which Disney doesn't put it out in theaters. Because you ain't going to lose, the, the way you lose the most money right now is by not putting it in theaters at all. Because then you've automatically lost $150 million. Like, this X-Men movie even makes $200 million at the box office. It's going to lose less than by right. not releasing it right. at all. And let's call a spade a spade. It's going to make more than, than $200 million at the box office all total. So I can't see any reasonable rationale to not release it. They're going to release it. But, man, I, I just, I love this franchise. And while I was apprehensive about Kimberg making this his directorial debut, I was still cheering for him and... Again, we haven't seen it. 
I'm now I'm worried. I'll be honest. I'm flat out worried now, Rob. Yeah, you know, and we they've been killing it with the X X Men films. You got Deadpool, you got Logan, Days of Future Past. Deadpool I love two Deadpool first two class. first class. I mean, they've had a great. I mean, I liked Apocalypse a lot more than than a lot of people did, but they've really been doing a great job with it. And to hear that this might be the 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 send off for all of these characters, yeah. at least for the time being, is is sort of heartbreaking. Sort of heartbreaking. But hope springs eternal. Right? Fingers crossed. Hey, we have had situations where we've had people tell us such and such a movie is terrible, and then we see it and we go, no, it ain't. Right. And maybe that'll be the case with this X-Men film. And they're still working on it. It's only January. <laughs> it's only January. Wasn't the movie supposed to come out this month or something? Uh, it's Well, I think it's isn't it May or June now or something. Yeah, but wasn't it originally supposed yeah, to be? Like, it's supposed to have yeah. already been in theaters. They I pushed it. I just hope it's... I'm pulling for you guys. I want it to be good. I want it to be good. You're always so, eh, Charles? And then there's always a speech, and nobody cares. I mean, what I, a great line! I mean, all Why that would stuff, that line be wasted? Uh, yeah, I, I hope it's good. All right, listen. Let's move on to this last thing here before we take some Twitter questions from the viewers. Listen, um, I was pleasantly surprised watching football this weekend, which was a great weekend of football. What a weekend of football! But we won't go into the sports things here. But it was a great weekend of football to see popping up a brand new Shazam trailer. Now, granted, it's not a full trailer. It's right. short. TV spot. A minute minute or less. Um, we have been, I think it's fair to say that both of us have been pretty excited about this Shazam Very much film. so. You know, we love the, the tone they seem to be going for. This seems to be the right kind of movie to make for this character. Yeah. And it's really putting the casting of Zachary Levi into sharper focus. You know, this is why I tell people this all the time. Who should play this role? Well, you can't say until you know what kind of that character they're portraying, yeah. right? So I think when a lot of people first heard Zachary Levi is going to play Shazam, a lot of people went, wait, what? Chuck? And I'm like, wait a minute. I think this gives a... Forget the Shazam you're envisioning. Let's see what Shazam it is they're making. And now that we're seeing these trailers, we're going, oh, oh, that's why they got Zach. He's perfect. Oh, for this kind of movie, new trailer came out. We talked about it already, but let's just gush about it a little bit more because you and I both love this. Well, trailer. you know, we keep talking about the the elements, how it's the big version of superhero movies. You know, yeah, like the, the movie Hanks big, the Tom, yeah, Hanks, Tom Hanks, big. Hanks big, yeah. And we really saw a lot of that. You know, your best friend and you are shopping for a lair now. Yep. You know, and it, and it, it's going to get beer. Your best beer. Your finest your beer. Finest please. beer. I mean, it's not like they're going to a liquor store. You know, they're yeah. going to a Seven Eleven, and it really it captures that same kind of tone and it looks like it has that for me it's about the wish fulfillment like how yeah. many kids have not put a cape on you've taken a towel and run around the house yes pretending kids. you're a kid sure kids <laughs> yeah just well kids. everyone just kids <laughs> i think that that this in this new tv spot we got to see a few things this kind of big humor yeah but also the dr savannah battle looks pretty epic like oh. maybe man of steel flying around cities punching each other epic it was very reminiscent of the man of steel stuff and yeah if you know me that itches me in all the right places that's like that's got the spot because i love man of steel well and you pointed out the other day on the show when he jumps off the roof of the oh, building yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and screams shazam in midair I mean, that was the shit. That that's I mean, awesome. come on, that was that was that's a great that's a yeah. You could have made that five seconds your first tease months right. ago. Right. Just a kid jumping off a building. Let's say pretend we hadn't seen anything else from Shazam yet. The first trailer come out, and your first tease is this kid jumping off a building into midair, yelling Shazam. Bam, the lightning strikes, and now he's Shazam. I mean, come on. I mean, yeah, he, like he took a little bit. You, you don't even know who it is. He's yeah. just like, he's like this kid. He's going to run off the building. You don't know. And then as he's in, and it's such a great, iconic, Pose. like right out of something out of Kingdom Come with the, <laughs> the crack of lightning in midair. And yep. it's, it was like right out of Al, uh, an Alex Ross painting. I can't wait for this movie. This movie looks great. It feels great. And, you know, coming off of huge successes, you know, we're coming off of Aquaman. Yeah. Which certainly outperformed my expectations for sure. Coming off of, you know, an Academy Award nomination for Best Picture. Or this. Coming off of Captain Marvel. What, uh, coming off in the environment that comic book movies are in right now, for it to come on this heels. Now, some people were starting to ask, well, could this movie make a billion? The, the only reason, hey, remember, I said Venom ain't going to make 800 million. Huh. It blew past 800 million. I said Aquaman wasn't going to make a billion. It blew by a billion. 
I just still don't think Shazam's going to make a billion because as we keep talking about, and I think this is completely irrelevant. Unlike a movie like Wonder Woman, who got introduced in Batman versus Superman. Unlike a movie like Aquaman, who Aquaman got introduced in right. uh, Justice League. Unlike a movie like Spider-Man Homecoming, Spider-Man was introduced in Civil War. We have this, and unlike Black Panther, who got introduced in Civil War as well. Shazam's, this is his first appearance on screen, period. There's no setup for him. He's just coming in cold. We've seen that with Doctor Strange, with, <laughs> pardon me, with Ant-Man. And they made, you know, six, seven hundred million dollars. Yeah. Great success. That's where I'm thinking Shazam's going to come in. But who knows, man? I mean, we go see this and we think this is the greatest comedy, action, superhero film of all time. <laughs> Maybe possible, but I'm still leaning away from a billion. Well, what's really what's really interesting about what we've seen is these comic book movies that are coming out one after the uh, one after another, they're delivering. Yeah. You know, we got to see Infinity War comes out. And it was better than, I mean, we all knew it was going to be good, but it was better than even I thought. Then Incredibles yeah. 2 comes out, makes a billion dollars. And how good. You know, we don't give Incredibles 2 enough airtime on it. Incredibles 2, I watched it again over Christmas with my family. It's so freaking yeah, good. Yeah, you got Incredibles 2 coming out. Then you, 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 you have, of course, Aquaman coming out at the end of the year. You have Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Now we have Captain Marvel coming. We've got Shazam coming. I mean, comic book movies... Forget their genre. They're just delivering entertainment. And isn't that what we go to the movies for? And this is this is an exciting time. Black Panther, you know, setting the table for 2019. Yeah. We got Avengers Endgame coming. These comic book movies are 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 bringing the fun. And and that's isn't that what you want? And it looks like Shazam is going to continue that. Oh progress. yeah. I mean, it's got a lot of goodwill. And this trailer just emphasizes that even more. I Bam. cannot wait. I cannot wait. I just don't want X Men Dark Phoenix to come out and harsh my comic book mellow. Oh, uh, don't harsh my mellow X Men, please. Don't kill the buzz. All right, <laughs> pardon me, guys. All right, that'll do it for our pre-arranged topics today. But as we do in the weekly here, we like to go to the viewer email and check the pages there to see what you guys are talking about and what you guys want to discuss. So let's jump on over to Twitter right now and see what has come in. You guys send in the questions using the hashtag the weekly hero. First one comes to us from Rafael De La Guito, who writes, Who are we more likely to see in a DC movie? Uh, <laughs> Joe's Deathstroke or The Rock's Black Adam? Oh, that is a great question. That's a great question. Right, because I'm telling you, with every passing day, both look less and less likely. But, right. But well, how would you answer? What do you think? Well, look, if this Shazam movie does, go does it good, if it does well... I think we're going to see Dwayne Johnson playing Black Adam because who better as a foe for Shazam 2? Right. Uh, as much as I want to see Joe Manganiello as Deathstroke, because I thought he looked great as Deathstroke. Deathstroke's one of my favorite. Deathstroke and Brother Blood are two of my favorite villains, both from New Teen Titans. But I just, I mean, anything to do with Justice League seems less likely than something yeah. to do with Shazam if Shazam's good. Plus, I want to see Black Adam and Shazam fight. Here's the thing. They announced that Black Adam wasn't going to make his first appearance in a Shazam film. He was going to have a Black Adam movie. I know. And that was years ago. Yeah, but you know what movie he's in right now? The movie where Han is getting no justice. That's right. He's making those movies. He's making lots of movies. He just ain't making a Black Adam movie. No. So that's becoming less and less likely. As far as Joe, I, I don't think it's going to happen. You know, it's funny because my wife, Anne, <clears throat> she just had Joe and uh, our friend Kyle Newman. She brought them over to Hasbro to do a day to talk about the new book, the Dungeons and Dragons book that I've talked about in here, because Joe's yeah. a massive Dungeons and Dragons fan. So Anne got to hang out with him for the day, and I, I don't think we're going to see. Honestly, right now I don't think we're going to see either. But I think the more likely one, because of the reasons you just so eloquently put, I think the most likely is probably the Rock is Black Adam. Although I don't think either are going to happen. But if one of them was, it would probably be that. And who knows? Maybe both of them will still happen. We'll yeah, I would see. look in a perfect world, both should happen because yeah, they both are, look great in their respective roles. All right, let's go to the next tweet. And the next tweet right now comes us from Danny, who writes, "Is Fox making a Deadpool three? As reports say, okay, what Danny is talking about is, and we talked about this a little bit on the John Campus show the other day. Right now, Ryan Reynolds is in China." promoting the first ever Deadpool release in China, Once Upon a Deadpool, being released in China. He's doing all sorts of crazy things out there to report. But in a story in Variety, where he's talking about this stuff, he also just happens to drop, we're developing Deadpool 3 right now. We're writing it. We're going to make it, uh, we're going to go with a real different direction than we have with the other ones because we like to change things up. Because most of the time, 
you know, these comic book characters, they either hit their eighth sequel or four films too late, changing things up a little bit. So he says they want to change things up. I was like, wait a minute, time out. I thought this was like Gambit and like X-Force. We thought with the Disney thing coming in. But remember this. Somebody developing something is a long way yeah. from that movie's getting made. I'm developing three movies right now. Ain't none of them are ever going to make it to the screen. Somebody developing something does not mean... now. What could this be? Could it be that... Here's what I think is the most likely scenario here, Ryan. Uh, uh, Ryan. Ryan. I was going to call Mr. Reynolds. I wish. <laughs> here's what I think is the most likely scenario. I think right now, Ryan Reynolds and his writers, Paul, and I, I'm, oh, I'm forgetting the other guy's name. Yeah. And I had them both in my studio, and I can't remember their names. But anyway, I think they are... Look, the Disney's takeover is coming. Let's put together our pitch for how we can continue with Deadpool with Disney. Doesn't mean anything's going to happen. Doesn't mean Disney's going to take it. And I think that's what he means when he says, we're developing something. It's a big change in direction, probably away from the harsh R stuff. And we're going to present it. Now, another option here that I don't know is not true is maybe Ryan Reynolds has already been in communication with, with Disney. And they said, hey, Ryan, give us something that does this, this, and this, and give us that to take a look at. So maybe there is some studio involvement there. But my feeling right now is there's no studio involvement at this point. He's just trying to put together a pitch to keep Deadpool alive. But again, I don't know that. That's just my guess. What would you guess right now, Robert? Well, you know, like I said, I had sort of an outlandish idea, which I said to you the which other day. I love. And I was thinking, how could you bring our Deadpool that exists now, the R-rated Deadpool? First of all, it can't be R-rated. You got to get rid of the National Women's Day jokes. You got to get rid of the bloodletting. But one of the things the MCU has not done is made a parody film, a parody of itself. What better way than the whole meta story about the studio merger and a character like Deadpool who existed in one universe now come in suddenly finds himself in the MCU, you know, and he's like, what the, what the fuck are you guys? Like, like, and literally without saying the F word, but it could be a parody film where you actually bring back whoever wanted, who, who wouldn't want to do this, by the way, you could bring back whatever actors from the MCU that you want. They would be playing their characters and they would be dealing with Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool coming in from this all, literally the alternate X-Men universe and they're like, and he would know who the X-Men are. Like it could be a funny joke or you just make the whole thing a parody where he interacts like Deadpool destroys. You'd brought up Deadpool destroys. That Deadpool kills the kills, Marvel the, universe. Kills the Marvel universe. You could play that whole thing out and you know, you could even do it where he wakes up and then he kills everybody. Kills everybody. It turns out, oh, it's just a dream. You, it could be hilarious. You gotta have Chris Evans as Captain America at some point going, Language. It, you gotta it, have that it, at some uh, yeah, point. all that. It's just it's a total balls to the wall parody movie, like it's airplane, but in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but using our Marvel Cinematic Universe characters with the addition of Deadpool, and it, that doesn't destroy the integrity of the MCU. It doesn't destroy the integrity of Deadpool, and it could still be great. And That's you, what I would do. And you know what? For everybody who is at home right now, is saying that would be just too ridiculously expensive to do. Think about this: <clears throat> if you do. Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe, a, a, a different version of it. You only have to get Chris Evans to say, I'll come in and do that for one day. You only need oh, Evans right. for one day. <laughs> then you need Chris Pratt for one day. You need Gwyneth Paltrow for one day. You need Brie Larson for one day. You need Ro uh, Robert Downey Jr. for one day. And all you really need is Ryan Reynolds. And everybody else to say, yeah, I'll come, I'll come in and do that. Who wouldn't? <clears throat> Think of it like a giant SNL sketch. Yeah. In feature length format, I think people would come to see this. I think this, and you don't, you can put a little bit of visual effects in, but you wouldn't need a whole shit ton. And I think you got a winner. I love your idea. I mean, I, I, you could even do crazy things. Like since the universe is opening up, Hugh Jackman, Wolverine finally gets to make, come through. Like there's blowback or there's spillage. Even, I mean, how funny would it be that, De that Deadpool, what Deadpool doesn't know is he's inadvertently brought Galactus with him. Oh my God. <laughs> but I would also be great if he's just going through the movie saying, Okay, I killed this guy, but I want to kill him. But right. he never refers to him, and then at the end, it's Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. Right, and then like, they've That's oh. the guy I've wanted. And the funny thing time. is, is that Deadpool doesn't know that he's in the MCU. Like or play it like that. It could be look, I want to see this movie. I want to see it so bad. But <laughs> but honestly, though, like pushing aside that brilliant idea, what do you think he means when he says we're developing? <laughs> where where do you think they're at? Uh, you know what? I think he's got to figure out a way to how do you how do you retain what they've done in Deadpool 1 and 2 in a PG-13 framework. 
whatever that is going to be. I don't know what that's going to be because you can't. They're just not going to make an R-rated no, superhero movie. They could. Movie. They could. But, but I, I think you're right. I don't. And Bob Iger has given lip service to. Yeah, I think we. Uh, I think you could have R-rated uh, stuff done the right way. Uh, that's nice lip service. I don't really think he means it. I, I don't think he has any intention of doing R-rated stuff, which would be great if he did, but I think he has no intention of doing the, that. The so as soon as a Walmart parent complains that their kid who loved that new Deadpool, PG Deadpool 13 movie, or Once Upon a Deadpool went back and watched Deadpool 1 and 2, yeah. it's not going to be pretty. My son asked me what National Women's Day is. What does it mean? <laughs> Nuts. All right. Let's go to our final email of the day and our final email today comes to us from rob turner who writes uh okay here's one like you john i love mystery men oh god i love mystery men so much uh, realize some people may have answered this before but i honestly think a film uh the film has the potential to make a great netflix show wide range of interesting characters superhero parody etc what do you think well yes i i mean i i am unabashedly a massive fan of mystery men are you kidding me? William H. Macy is the shoveler. Hank Azaria as the blue Raja. <laughs> ben Stiller as Mr. Furious. Janine Garofalo as the bowler. Uh, you got Pee Wee Herman as the spleen. You have the invisible boy and you have the disco boys and you have Casanova Frankenstein and Captain Amazing. I don't care how many Oscars Greg Kinnear wins in his career, he will always be Captain Amazing. To they me. should just bring that cast back. Netflix would green light it like that. Oh my God. God, I would so be down. <laughs> I would so be down. But you know, you're right. It's that I'm not usually the type of guy who goes, "What about taking this movie and turning it to TV show?" I'm like, "No, no, no. I prefer my movies. I prefer my movies." But Mystery Men is something that would work great as a 12 episode HBO series. I oh, think yeah. it would work amazingly well. So I'd be down. Now, if I remember correct, you're not a big fan of Mystery Men, right? Mm. You know what? I don't love it. Oh God, I love it. I don't so love it. Much. I know some people do. It just didn't really work for me. However, I liked all the elements of it, but as a film, it just didn't. I remember, you know what to say, honestly? I've watched it once. I saw it in the theater. I went to actually a press screening of it. And that's the last I ever saw of it, but it makes <clears> me want to go back and watch it again. You know what we got to do sometime? Here's the thing uh, uh, Ashley Whalen, who is uh, a new assistant around here and appears on the John Campbell show, she was telling us the other day she's never seen Deadpool. Right. So we were talking about, we need to sit down, get a camera, and film us with Ashley watching, filming really Ashley, yeah. watching Deadpool yeah. for the first time and getting a reaction. I think you and I need to get a case of beer, and uh, for me, maybe a case of Smirnoff Ice. I don't really drink, but uh, we'll get <laughs> Can some I get whiskey <laughs> and you can have the Smirnoff sure, Ice? Sure, you know what? I'll, I'll even drink for this. All right. I don't get drunk, but I'll drink for this. And sit down and watch Mystery Men again. I think that maybe maybe that's a double header. We gotta do some Deadpool for her, Mystery Men for you, and see if we can't change that uh, that perception. But uh, bottom line, Rob, I think the idea is great. Yeah, I think like a twelve episode HBO series, perfect. I would love that. Me too. All right, guys. Well, we've turned the final page. The ink is dry, and that will do it for this issue of the Weekly Hero. And we're so glad you guys came along for the ride with us on this. I want to thank, of course. Mr. Robert Meyer Burnett. Robert, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me, as always, on Twitter at BurnettRM. Find me on Instagram at RM Burnett, or you can find me on my YouTube channel, The Burnett Work, doing these Rob Observations chats, which I like doing, and thanks for all participating in those. And uh, you guys can follow me online on Twitter and on Instagram, simply at John Campia. That'll do it for us for now, guys. Thanks a lot for being here. We're closing the pages, and until the next installment, bye-bye.